the HP Omen versus the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G15. Now, I have two versions of the HP Omen that are gonna show up in the benchmarks later in the video. We have the Ryzen 9 5900HX with the RTX 3070 and the Ryzen 7 5800H with the RTX 3060. Now, the G15 is going to have the Ryzen 9 5900HS and the RTX 3080 GPU. Now, all are gonna have 16 gigs of RAM, all are gonna have one terabyte SSDs, but I want you to know those benchmarks will be coming up in just a minute. The G14 is gonna be a magnesium alloy laptop through and through. It's gonna be light, it's gonna be thin. Wherever here, we have the HP Owen with a aluminum keyboard deck, but the rest of the laptop is going to be plastic. Now, the side panels do carry down with the aluminum, but once you get to the bottom cover, top cover, and screen bezel, you're gonna have plastic. So overall, there's a lighter package over here with the G15 than you have with the HP Omen. It's slightly heavier. Now, regarding thickness, the G15 is also a little bit thinner. So these two laptops on the go friendliness is gonna go to the G15. Now let's talk about assembly. The assembly is one thing that I really look at when reviewing a laptop. And I will say, I really like how Asus has secured the bottom cover into the side panel. I think they've done a great job with this. Now there are some catchy edges around the hinges where they link into the bottom cover. And they have these kind of plastic pieces to keep the laptop from like sinking in too much to the desk. But overall, it has a very good assembly. I love the rounded edges and the way the ports assemble into the laptop. Regarding the HP Omen, there's far more catchy edges on the assembly. So we have here in the corners, how the bottom cover sets into the side panel. I'm just not as impressed with the assembly of the HP Omen. And also we have this big kind of chunky vent, thick plastic piece here, and it just, it sounds a little on the hollow side and the plasticky side. Whereas with the G15, It just feels more tight, more assembled. So build quality, materials, thin and lightness, on the go friendliness. I'm gonna lean towards the Asus Zephyrus G15. Let's go ahead and check out the ports real quick. So on the Asus Zephyrus G15, we have the mini SD card slot, USB type A. And on the other side, we have our power port, our HDMI network port, USB type A, two USB type Cs and a headphone jack. On the HP Omen, we have our SD card slot, which is a big win for the HP Omen, a headphone jack, HDMI, USB type A, and a network port, as well as our power adapter. On the other side, we have two USB type A's, a mini display port, and a USB type C. Big benefit for the SD card is going to be on the go video editors and creators. Go ahead and drop your SD card in there, pull your photos in, and you're good to go. The reason I like the mini SD card slot is it creates a, you could pull a mini SD card out of a SD card adapter if you could shoot on that, and that could be your you know, shooting SD card in your camera. Or you could have a dongle and put your footage in, and then the mini SD card could be an expanse of your storage. So you could bring along some 512s or some one terabyte mini SSDs, SSDs, mini SD cards on your trip and you would have expandable storage. You don't have to carry a bunch of big, you know, for instance, for myself, Samsung T5 drives around with you. You could have just these mini cards and they could be expandable storage for you. So that's one benefit of the G15. Next, let's go ahead and look at opening and closing the lid and the screen flex to see which one handles that better. Both are, you know, substantial laptops, so they open and close without any issues. They don't move on the table. But now let's go ahead and check out the screen flex of each of these laptops, starting with the HP Omen. The HP Omen has quite a bit of screen flex, but when you get over here to the G15, you don't have much better. They're both pretty screen flexy. Um, so either one, they're, they're you know screen flex concerned. I'm not a big screen flex concerned person, but I know some of you guys are. And so if that concerns you, note that these both have some screen flex. At the bottom of the screen, the G15 has slightly less screen flex. Let's go ahead and check the bounce of these screens. So just about the same as far as balance is concerned. Next, we're gonna look at the webcam, which the G15 does not have and the HP Omen does. And here's a quick sample of the HP Omen's webcam. The webcam for the HP Omen, obviously if you're in the audio right now, it is a little grainy in the background, but the color of the skin tones seems very natural. And so it doesn't make you really orange or super blue or green. So I really like that about it. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of each of the models that we're discussing here, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I always appreciate when you guys use those links. Next up, we're going to look at the keyboard. 
Both keyboards are good, soft, and quiet. One of my favorite trackpads until the G15 showed up was the HP Omen. It's quiet, secured very nicely to the chassis, and it was a good size for a gaming laptop. But then the G15 strolled into my office and I re-fell in love. So now my new favorite trackpad for a gaming laptop is gonna be the G15 and the M16. Those are great trackpads. I love them both, they're, they're almost identical. The keyboard is great on the HP Omen. You got the extra function buttons and it's responsive, snappy, and quiet. I love that. What I like about the G15 is there's some more function buttons built into the user experience. You can jump quickly into the Armory Crate Center and the access to everything is just a lot easier. Punch for punch, I like the screen on the G15 slightly more. It feels sharper and you can see the full results coming up on the screen now for the color gamut range, color accuracy, and brightness. The audio experience out of the Zephyrus G15 is also better. It has these upward facing bass speakers where the main speakers along the bottom of the chassis for both laptops. Here's a quick audio sample of each of the laptops for you. Battery life is something that the G15 also does better because of iGPU mode, which is not available on the HP Omen 15. However, it is available on the 17, which I find interesting. I don't know if that's because the 17 is an Intel and that gives you more customization. I have no idea, but iGPU mode is not available on the HP Omen, okay? So what we're running into here is better battery life out of the G15. So it's gonna be a better on the go laptop. You get substantially more battery life out of this laptop on iGPU mode, which means basically you turn off the dedicated GPU and it's great for productivity tasks on the go. I find when I'm taking notes, I'm working on scripts or you know just doing general business tasks or even Photoshop work, um, it works well for the G15 and lasts longer on the road. Also, one thing to point out is that the fan is currently running on the HP Omen at idle where it is not running on the G15. So you're gonna have the fan mode kick on and off at idle for the HP Omen, but that will not be the case for the G15. Concerning the upgrade path, the HP Omen is gonna give you access to both RAM sticks where the G15 is not. So if you're looking to upgrade the laptop post-purchase, the HP Omen is gonna give you more flexibility, getting you up to 64 gigs of RAM if you swap both sticks with 32s, where if you swap the one, you'll end up with 40 gigs of RAM on the G15. Now without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks. We're gonna start out at Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core. As you can see, those Ryzen processors are neck and neck, and the Ryzen 7 isn't too far behind. Let's move on to 3D modeling to see how these laptops stack up against each other. Though the HP Omen with its RTX 3070 has eight gigs of VRAM, the RTX 3080 with the Ryzen 9 5900HS really stands out on all of the tests for 3D modeling. So, so far, our winner is the G15 for performance. Moving down the line to After Effects, once again, the G15 takes the prize, getting better scores in both the After Effects standard benchmark and render benchmark.
because of your amazing feedback, I now am featuring gaming benchmarks on my channel. I'm really excited to be releasing these now and on future laptops, so just keep an eye out for those. They might not be on every single video, but they're going to be as much as possible from here on out. However, when we get into video editing, we're pretty much neck and neck for export times out of Premiere Pro, and you can see those coming up on the screen. For four play playback in Premiere Pro, either of these laptops will work great, and even 6K B Raw, you'll barely notice the drop frames out of either. Looking at DaVinci Resolve, being that these are all Ryzen processors, Dissolve is very happy. And if you get the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna get maximum performance out of the GPU optimization in DaVinci Resolve. I'm using the free version, and so the export times reflected are from the free version of DaVinci Resolve. One of my favorite tests, as always, is the different fan modes out of the command centers inside of each laptop, and then the supporting fan noise, thermals, and export time that each one produces. No matter which laptop you consider for no matter which laptop you consider for Photoshop, you're in good hands. They all get great scores well above the 800s. So if you're looking for this laptop for the Adobe Design Suite, Figma, Sketch, the Affinity Suite, you're in good hands if you're a designer, artist, or photographer. My fanboyness seems to be sliding towards the Zephyrus G15. It's got better assembly, it's lighter, clearly has great performance, great battery life, a large trackpad, a great keyboard great audio experience, color gamut range, uh, the works. Now the pricing may vary between these two models. So of course, links below if you're ready to make a purchase or just check the pricing. Likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you wanna miss out on the future uploads.